Welcome to Hymn Stories, a podcast about how our songs of the faith came to be and how they have encouraged, comforted, and strengthened believers like you and me. Hymn Stories is a part of the Media Gratier Podcast Network. My name is Ryan Bush. I, I want to thank those of you especially who have left reviews and rated the podcast and who have contacted me personally to let me know how the episodes have encouraged you, how they've helped you to cherish and love Christ more. I don't really care about making a podcast just so that people will listen. What I do care about is helping the church to treasure the gospel, to cling to Christ. These hymns have helped me to do that, and I think the stories behind them will help you as well. Today, I have three tidbits to share with you about William Cooper. William Cooper is very well known for his bouts of depression and really what we might call mental torment, but that isn't all there was to him. It's easy to get a very narrow view of someone, so I want to broaden that out just a little bit. But before I get to those details, an interesting fact about there is a fountain filled with blood. Now, this hymn was first published in Oni Hymns. So I have an edition that was published in 1877. Now, in this edition, uh, we find the the original text of There is a Fountain Filled with Blood. Now, the original title was Praise for the Fountain Opened, as I mentioned in the last episode. And it, one, one interesting thing of the Oni hymns is all of them were written, there are many in here, were written by either John Newton or William Cooper. John Newton wrote most of them. Uh, Whenever you come across a, one of the hymns in, in the Oni hymn book, and it has an italicized C just before the title, that tells you that it, it was penned by William Cooper. So here, uh, it's, this is book one, and it's hymn number 79, and it is based in Zechariah chapter 13, verse 1, praise for the fountain opened. Now, in modern-day versions of There is a Fountain Filled with Blood, we generally only have five stanzas. But in this version, there are actually seven. The two last verses are, are left out of, of all of the versions that I've ever come across until I looked in the Oni hymns. So I just want to share those with you because you, you may have never heard them. So the, the fifth verse, just to kind of situate us, it says, Then in a nobler, sweeter song, I'll sing thy power to save. When this poor lisping, stammering tongue lies silent in the grave. Now, you can you probably notice there how that verse has been modified a bit. It's been switched around a little bit. Now, here comes the two final verses. Lord, I believe thou hast prepared, unworthy though I be, for me a blood-bought free re reward, a golden harp for me. Tis strung and tuned for endless years, and formed by power divine. To sound in God the Father's ears, no other name but thine. Now, as I mentioned, William Cooper is is known for his hymns, and in his personal life, he's known for his his mental bouts of depression and anxieties and really what many have termed as a mental illness but that's but that's not all there was to him he was a devoted believer and a, a faithful church member he he loved the lord and he was a lay helper in oni he served alongside john newton to help shepherd the flock and i want you to know something that john newton said about him this is a quote from John Newton talking about William Cooper. He said, He loved the poor. He often visited them, consoled and comforted them in their distress. And those who were seriously disposed were often cheered and animated by his prayers. 
And, the, and then he, he concludes by saying this, the Lord evidently sent him to Oni, where he has been a blessing to many, a great blessing to myself. Now, there's something else about William Cooper that um, only the most diligent of historians uh, would probably know about. I certainly had never heard this information about William Cooper and until I came across it in this obscure book uh, about hymns. Uh, maybe you have heard of it. I don't, I don't know. It's, it was news to me. Hey, Seth, will you come here for a minute? Do you know the song we sing? There is a, there is a fountain. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that was written by a man named William Cooper, and he had a he had a special pet. He actually had two of them. What pet do you think he had? Puppy. Well, look look at this picture. I've got a picture of William Cooper with his with his pets here. That's Why? that's William Cooper. Do you see him? You see that what man? Is it, what is his pet? Do you see him right there yes. on the floor? What are those? I don't monkey. Monkey? No, it's not a monkey. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. Okay, look right here. See that? What's that coming off his head? No, I don't know. Those are big long ears. What has big long ears? Um. And hops around. Um. What that? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, right. Apparently, um, William Cooper had some friends, and they, they were worried about him because he was struggling mentally. So they decided that they would give him a pair of tame hares, two rabbits, two pet rabbits. And apparently, he, he became very, very attached to them. They grew up under his care. They were very young when he got them, and... He took care of them and was very much attached to them for 11 years. Uh, listen to what he, how he described them and what he said about them. He said, I always submitted them into the parlor after supper. When the carpet affording their feet a firm hold, they would frisk and bound and play a thousand gambols, in which Bess, that was the name of one of them, being remarkably strong and fearless, was always superior to the rest and proved himself the vestress of the party. One evening, the cat, being in the room, had the hardiness to pat Bess upon the cheek, an indignity which he resented by drumming upon her back with such violence that the cat was happy to escape from under his paw and hide himself. <laughs> um, but that's that's not all. Apparently, that awakened in William a an interest in, in pets and in animals. Um, he had rabbits, guinea pigs, dogs, canaries, goldfinches, a magpie, a jay, a starling. All of these were added to uh, what he saw as very important possessions in his household. Thank you for joining me in this episode of Hymn Stories. May the Lord bless you and keep you as you sing and make melody in your heart to Him.